Space Force. Space Force. He's a man. The ripping and the tearing. Wild women. Oh, yes. There's no words on it. There's no words there. Coming to you live from Arcane Sublevel 7, it's Talk is Cheap. Now here's your host, Dan Hofeld. All right, go, go. Welcome to Talk is Cheap, where cheap is talk, and talk is cheap, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Dan Hofeld. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, as you can tell, we're live streaming over on Twitch and Mixer. This is what you have to do when you're fighting the New World Order, the elite, the people who control YouTube because they want to censor information. If you guys don't know, this is a new show kind of format. I'm going to do this every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, and 11 a.m. Pacific. And you can always join us live at that time. There's a universal chat system. We got Mixer, Twitch. It all comes through on my live chat here. So if you want to talk to me, I can see you right there as well. Next week, I may think about opening the phone lines if we can get enough viewership. If not, we'll just continue on as is until we can get our YouTube wings back. Because when you're in jail, you're in jail. It's really hard to get viewership because that's where everybody is, is on YouTube. But I'm going to keep on doing this every Tuesday. So you know I'm always here. And then the links are below for alternative links. If you're watching this after, if you're going to, oh, I should have watched live, go ahead and bookmark that. And you can watch us live later. And I'm going to take, this is the whole, basically it's a whole podcast, and then I'm going to take sections, subsections of this show, because people have a short uh, sp uh, time span on YouTube, they want information like that. So I'm going to just cut segments out for YouTube as well, keep that easy for you. Great, great show today for you folks. We're going to talk about Chemtrails, there's actually a name, I didn't even know about this until I looked it up later, Operation Indigo Skyfold. And I looked into that, wow, this has been out since 2014. And it's all new to me. We also got an update on one small town, Michael Tellinger's initiative. There's a city in Canada, Ontario, Canada, doing this. That should be interesting to check out as well. We're going to take a look at the Change 4 Chinese spacecraft that landed on the dark side of the moon. The first ones to land on the dark side of the moon. Do we believe that? I don't know. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to take a look at the 1986 Russian UFO crash or some crazy video footage on that but is it real is it hoaxed let's take a look at that and then we're going to take a look at democrats introduce a bill to eliminate the electoral college this is very dangerous and i want to break this down on why it's dangerous but first things first tonight is rumored for trump to declare a state of emergency for the border now the way they talk about state of emergencies, it seems like it's a big deal, but when it comes down to it, it's really not. Like, there's so many state of emergencies that are already active, and he did one for the opioid crisis here. The opioid crisis is an emergency, and I'm saying officially right now, it is an emergency. It's a national emergency. And that was back in... August of 2017, so a good couple of years now. Well, a year and a half, I guess. Not even a half. But when we scroll down this list, I wanted to mention some. These, these are the ones in red that continue to go through. For those listening on the podcast, I got a graph up here that shows all the national emergencies and the ones that are black with two dots, they've ended. The ones that are red and continue on are still going. We have one going on from Carter yet. And then there's Clinton that has 17 of those. There's so many of them. And it's like, you know, when you hear national emergency, you think it's a big deal, but it's it's really not. You know, we had one from 1979 that was blocking Iranian government property, another for the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. That was in 94. Declaration of national emergency by a reason of certain terrorist attacks. That was September 11th one. That was the uh, the big one for the World Trade Center. So they had to do that. And that's ongoing and I believe uh, Q pointed out they can have some advantage with that as well. Also blocking property of persons, undermining democratic process or institutions in Zimbabwe. That was in 2003. And blocking property of certain persons, prohibiting the export of certain goods to Syria. So there's so many of these. All I'm trying to say here, folks, is 
yeah, so what? There's going to be a national emergency about the border, but when it comes down to it, it's like, it's not that big of a deal. You know, you think you hear national emergency, it's like, oh my God, ring the doorbells. It's all national emergency. Oh my God. But yeah, so I wanted to talk about the New York City mayor came out today. I captured this clip quickly before the show because I thought it was interesting to cover. So New York City is going to provide health care for all. They're going back to the Obamacare thing. I got a clip here. Let's take a listen and blow our minds. When you think about the people out there, the 600,000 people out there who have no coverage at this moment, they're all different kinds of New Yorkers. Some of them are young, and as Mina said, they, they think maybe they don't need insurance well. I'm here to tell them everyone needs coverage. Everyone needs a place to turn. Uh, some folks just can't afford the policies that are on the exchange. Some people can't navigate uh, the system. They find it overwhelming. Some folks are our neighbors who happen to be undocumented. What do they all have in common? They need coverage. They need health care. And we know this is the approach. NYC care is going to make a difference. For those who can afford something, they'll pay on a sliding scale. For those who can't afford Ooh. anything, care will be for free. No one will be turned away. There it is. And care will be comprehensive. That is what we believe in in New York City. Those are New York City values. No one gets turned away. Everyone is respected. Okay. How are you going to afford this thing? This is what needs to happen. Yeah, it sounds great on the surface, and this is how they get all the millennials and the younger generation to sign on. All the socialism is great, but let's bring in the illegals. Let's fund them. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't have a job, you can't pay for it. Let's give it to them for free. But if you have a job, you you'll uh, some of your income will be taken for that. So basically, you're kind of incentivizing not to work when it comes down to it. Not saying that oh. Everybody needs to work. Like, I want a paradise planet as just as much as anybody, but we got to bring in the free technology systems. They got good health systems in the space programs that they could bring out, and we wouldn't even have to deal with this stuff. But are these doctors, are they going to volunteer some of their time to pay for this? Like, Ron Paul said a very important thing when he was being elected the other year, or running for election, excuse me, he should have been elected that doctors are supposed to volunteer some of their time. I don't think any of those New Yorkers are going to do that. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But that's how you fund something more, like Ron Paul says, people pay for it. Then, oh, we're supposed to give, like, I think Ron Paul said maybe 20% of your time just free so you can, you know, provide more for people, do a nice thing now and then. But, yeah, that is that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's break down. I want to switch over and talk about some event news a little bit because this is been on a lot of people's minds here. Jamie, please. So the event, uh, we were supposed to have it happen last year. A lot of people were disappointed. I know I was. You could feel that that time frame of... I, it, in March, it really felt like something was going to happen, but now I feel so far gone that there's nothing that's going to happen. If anybody doesn't know, the event was supposed to be this big wave, uh, uh, solar sneeze, if you will, it was going to come in, go through the earth. It looked like a translucent light, like a bubble, if you will, and transform people. And I think we needed that. And it kind of got me thinking, maybe it didn't happen because Trump won the election. Now, people are going to say, well, why would you say that? Well, if Hillary would have got it, we would, would we be seeing all this change? No, we wouldn't. So the fact that we're seeing all this change happen, maybe they say, okay, we don't need the event. We can make it a little softer for people so they can handle it and not go so crazy out of their mind. So the reason I bring this up is because a lot of my viewers said, you know, you should watch that movie Annihilation. Now, in this movie Annihilation, this is not by uh, Paramount Pictures. This was released in February of last year, 2018, I believe. They were basically kind of co-opting the event movement and showing this translucent bubble thing in Madur, if you will, that they went in and it was transforming. Here's a... <laughs> 
plot exploit people if you don't want to hear it, skip ahead a little bit. But basically this bubble came down and it transformed all the plants and animals inside and changed their DNA. And basically kind of what the event is supposed to do. I'm going to play a clip of the show just so we can watch it a little bit here as I'm talking. But you kind of got to wonder if this was co-opting the whole event movement, like if this was put in place. But they would have had to have known about it for some time because they would have had to get it filmed and all that stuff. But there's the bubble. Looks very like exactly what we were supposed to see happen with the event when it comes in. Changes plants. So you got a variety of plant species growing on one vine. Animals. There's even a man, bear, pig animal, which is some scary stuff. But, you know, they had to introduce that scary element. But the reason I never watched this video, or I hold, held off on it because I was like, whatever. It's just uh, Hollywood trying to scare people, whatever. I'm not going to waste my time with that. But then I kind of really looked into it, and I was like, well, I'll watch it, whatever. I had a weekend. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It actually had a decent message at the end, you know, like the, the alien force that came down and terraformed the planet was neither good or bad. It was just trying to mimic things, and now there's a scary part. But, uh, yeah, so at the end of the day, the message was kind of good, but I would still say that they had to push the scary thing for the people. But if you're wanting to take a look at it, I'd say it's worth a quick watch. That's Annihilation. Now, if you don't know, that was actually based off a novel, the 2014 novel by Jeff Vattermeer. And I didn't see any part, I didn't read the novel or anything, but I didn't see anything in the uh, the description of it if there was a actual, like, translucent bubble, iridescent bubble like that. But they just said the area, uh, it was known as Area X. So, interesting, I thought I would share that stuff there. A couple quick news things. James Gilliland said we did have a peak of energy on the December 16th, and we're going to be seeing another peak of energy come in on the 24th of January. So mark that on your calendar, folks. You might want to see if you feel anything that day. I probably will mark it down myself, try to check, see how I feel, because you don't know. Sometimes it's like, oh, are we going through something? I don't know. Some people are more sensitive than others. But interesting there. I think we're really going to see a lot of changes this year a lot of darkness being brought to light you can see it already but i think this is going to be a real win this year for the light side all right let's jump into some news and we'll go from there the ripping and the terror all right breaking news here folks Democrats introduced bill to eliminate electoral college. Now, why is this so crazy? Like, people don't even know how good the electoral college is. I certainly didn't when I was in high school learning about the political system and all that. It's very, very important. But we got Congressman Steve Conan. He's the 9th District Tennessee Congressman. So Congressman Steve Cohen, senior member of the House Judiciary Committee, introduced two constitutional amendments today on the opening day of the new Congress. The first would eliminate the Electoral College and provide for the direct election of the president and vice president of the United States. This is so dangerous. People don't even know. And then the second would eliminate the presidential parting power by prohibiting presidents from pardoning themselves, members of their families, members of of their administrations and their campaign staff. And he goes on to say, in two presidential elections since 2000, including the most recent one in which Hillary won 2.8 million more votes than her opponent, the winner of the popular vote did not win the election because of the distorting effect of the outdated electoral college. Yeah, it's outdated, all right. What? Yeah. Americans expect and deserve the winner Winner. Of the popular vote to win. Uh, I kind of did in school, but not anymore because I realized how important the Electoral College really is. He goes on to say, more than a century ago, we amended our Constitution to provide for the direct election of U.S. Senators. It's past time to directly elect our president and vice president. Well, all right, let's break this down. So 
Why is the Electoral College important? Number one, and first and foremost, and this always gets said, you don't have 51% of the people telling the 49% of the people what to do. That's disaster. The big issue is you don't have people in New York and California, the population centers of the U.S., making all the policies for the states in the middle, the uh, um, country state, the rural the farmers, all that, their needs are different than the ones out there. So if you can kind of have this shift back and forth this way, but believe me, they're, that's why they brainwash everybody. They want to keep this, the Democrats in power. And as I just showed on that clip earlier, when he wants to give health care to illegals, just they want to just drain the system. Why do they want to do that? Because they keep in power if they can bring illegals in. And that's going to be a very big thing if illegals can get free health care. Why not? Sanctuary City. So in school, it was like, ah, oh, this was su such a thing because I went to school in a city, a, a, bigger, a big city, not a bigger city, but it was big. And the way it's all set up, you know, all the teachers are Democrats and it just gets sold that the Democrats are for the poor people, the Republicans are for the rich people when it's not even that way. Maybe it was in the past. I don't think so. You could argue that fact. But the way it was, and they had the, those elections in school, and they make it almost feel bad if you voted Republican. And what it was was, oh, my friend's voting Democrat, so I'm going to vote Democrat too. And it's like, and the teachers push it. They, don't ex they didn't explain why the Electoral College was important. Because when I was in school, I was like, oh, it should be popular vote. It's like not even thinking why it was there. The, I tell you guys, the Founding Fathers... We're really brilliant in making this happen. This will also help deter voter fraud. Think about that. If you have separate states that or counties and all that that have their own the votes, it's it's harder for them to pump in dead people's votes, illegals' votes, all that stuff because they could just do it from one funnel versus you know trying to have to move it around. So that's very important there too. And just for fun, as we move on, I want to bring up this clip of Nancy Pelosi giving her Speaker of the House speech when she came in. I thought it was very funny. And listen very carefully to this, folks. Let us pray that God may bless our work and crown our good with brotherhood and sisterhood from sea to shining sea. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. I think I skipped a couple pages. She thinks she skipped a couple pages. Hear that? I think I skipped a couple pages. I think I skipped a couple pages. Yeah. <laughs> Her speech was so boring, she, she tried to get through it quicker, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, I thought it was just funny to bring that up and keep things lighter, folks. All right, let's move on to our next story here. Good morning. So, here we go. Chemtrail pilot blows the cover off Operation Indigo Skyfold. Now, this was just recently published. That's how I've seen it, but the actual... The whistleblower came out in 2014. He calls himself Blue J1. And he says this was for many reasons. They also said the global warming reason, of course, that's the, the mainstream one. But also, he was going to use this to cause a drought, which we can see now in California. And those fires, was that all set up? Of course it was. And also, the a big thing here, like they were selling this to them. The, these are the pilots that actually get in the planes, folks. Get up there and spray these chemtrails. You know, people are like, why wouldn't the pilots come forward? Well, they're coming forward. Well, the one did. He wanted other ones to come forward, but everybody's pretty tight-lipped about it. But it was also sold as using as a defense mechanism, like an atmospheric shield to protect us from enemies, is what they were telling him, which is like, okay, that's interesting, but what the hell? 
And also, so let's break down chemtrails real quick. They can transform warm, sunny days into cool, cloudy ones. The chemicals that are in these are barium salts. Barium salts. I got to get my uh, language right here. Yeah. Yeah. Aluminum oxide, strontium, and mercury. And when he came out with this, like I said, he was hoping his fellow pilots would come out also and talk more about it, but everybody's kind of been tight-lipped about it. He says, no matter what the stated reasons are given to those who fly the chemtrail jets, they are always told by their superiors that this ongoing and illegal atmospheric altering program is being conducted in the interest of national security. And uh, so pilots are told to fly specific routes while satellite control aerosol dispersed let me reread that. Pilots are told to fly specific routes while satellites control aerosol dispersal patterns. So again, with HARP controlling, having a hand in with the chemtrails. The pilots make course corrections from time to time and perform landings and takeoffs. Pilots navigate and maintenance crews are rotated constantly and only spend about 18 months at one given base to keep pilots and their families from making too many friends and ending up with loose lips. They also rotate between day and night flights, one base for daytime flights and one for night. Each base covers 250 mile zone and each fleet squadron of planes covers three states or an even larger swath of the ocean. So you break that stuff up the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Keep it compartmentalized. Don't keep people going to the same place forever and talking about this stuff because they, they got to keep them uninformed. And he says here, quote, without these flights, our enemy's newest technology weapons of war could easily penetrate America's airspace at will. We are dedicated and committed to keeping our allies safe from the same skyward threats, so we extend the arm of protection to those countries that support our efforts. Hostile nations are also building atmospheric shields, while at the same time trying to explore weaknesses in our ever-developing air and space-based technologies. So is that something that could be real? I suppose. Uh, you know, they got these uh, secret space programs and all this crazy stuff that we don't even know about. And they could be using this to block something like that, but it could just be a stupid cover story to try to get the people, the, the pilots, to agree to do this because it's <laughs> they, they got to keep them not knowing what's going on. We are kept in the dark when it comes to getting honest answers about what we are really spraying. I would not intentionally spray my children or family with toxic aerosols. 80% of the pilots do have, not have any family or children. That's key. Indigo pilots are chosen from top ranks within the Air Force, Navy, and Coast Guard. Most pilots are hardened to humanity and could care less killing off unwanted or leech, leeching aspects of America and the world. I swear to you, the majority of pilots are like machines. I call them tank terminators. Very, very rough do what they say, they don't care, they're making good money, so they're just going to keep their mouth shut. That's why we got to get rid of the monetary system. This is very interesting here. So he goes on to say, harp rays within the depths of the ocean itself. Navy has developed sophisticated underwater construction technology that allows for fully autonomous robot submersibles to travel great distances and even manufacture parts for these massive underwater arrays as they progress across the open sea floor. So harp antennas in the ocean, folks. Like you think of these, oh, the harp array in Alaska, that's the big one everybody thinks about. They obviously have them all over the world, other places as well, other countries. But in the depths of the ocean now too, it's like, because we talked about this before too, and he mentions it's here, Google Earth, Occasionally, air blurring some island bases or smudges areas of underwater arrays. They even paint fake clouds over some of our island installations to keep prying eyes away. We've had that on the show. We're looking at a map, Google Earth. We'll see some little smudging. It'll be right next to the island even. And we're like, why would they smudge when you can almost kind of tell that it's just water there? Well, he's saying that's underwater arrays. 
It could be other things too, I suppose. But also having the clouds over the island, I believe we showed one that was kind of over towards the Hawaii area that had a cloud that was nice, nice conveniently over that base so they can uh, clone and stamp their Photoshop skills with that. We are shown videos in our training of catastrophic destruction to our homeland by very sophisticated weapons, then told these will be the consequences if we don't fly. Got to keep them scared. We are paid more than any other pilot for our service other than Air Force pilots. Again, keep these pi pilots paid good, and they won't say a thing. And he's concerned because they're ordering them to lower, fly at lower al altitudes. And, you know, some people that might be growing mar have marijuana operations or some moonshine operations that they're going to start shooting at the planes as they go by. Because people are getting sick of it. Like, you see chemtrails, it's a nice blue sky day, and then you get a chemtrail and it's just, like, covered. Wow. What a way to, like, block sun, feel like crap. Right? So here's a new phase that he was talking about. This would be starting January 21st, 2015. So we should be seeing these in our sky. I know I did. I'm going to show that in a minute, a clip. So the focus, this is phase two. Now it says focus of their flights will be moved to areas east of California and Texas in order to advance the drought further into the heartland. I, now they didn't do that, but they did do California. You can see that there was that that big drought there, and uh, it's causing those fires as well. Plus, he feels that a new, this is the important part I wanted to talk about, he feels that a very new and extremely toxic chemtrail mix is going to be sprayed. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Using new technology that makes these special chemtrails completely invisible. Now, that's important for them to make these completely invisible because people can see them. You know, people are beginning to wake up to it. And it's they're, they're, the, the jig is up. So they got to keep this going so people can't see it. Now, I got two regular chemtrails on screen here for folks that are watching. I'll describe it for people that are listening. So the, the chemtrail, excuse me, we got a contrail and a chemtrail here. This is a perfect example Someone shot this in the sky. The contrail is on the left, and the chemtrail is on the right. Now, you can see the contrail has a nice fade to it, and it just disappears like that. And the chemtrail just sticks up there and stays. Big difference. Yes. So when you, people have that argument, that's the number one way to tell. But now, like I said, they have phase two, and too many people are knowing what's going on. So they came up with this new chemtrail mixture. And I've seen these in the sky before. That they have these chemtrails here. And look at that. It's spraying, but they're, it disappears in small chunks like that. Just small wispy chunks. And they kind of just disappear. And then they're gone. Now when I seen that before, I was like, okay, that's a contrail. But now with this Operation Indigo Skyfold whistleblower coming forward, Blue J1. He's saying that this is the new mixture. And now that really makes me think, okay, so like now they can, I've seen oh, days in Wisconsin, like I said, it's been a blue sky. It's like, oh, they must be not spraying chemtrails. It's been like a week not seeing chemtrails and clear sky. Well, that was probably these chemtrails here that just disappear like that. What a way to keep it covered up, but still do your damage that you want to do. And also, there was a Dr. Bill Deagle, this is actually an older video, who was talking about this as well when he was uh, dealing with these pilots in the hospital. Let's play that clip. Chemtrails. And uh, chemtrails, by the way, barium salts are in chemtrails. They are 10,000 times more toxic to your nervous system than lead. They contain mycobacteria, viruses, Pseudomonas florensis, bacteria, human plasma. Plasma. Hmm, wonder what human plasma is doing in chemtrails. Oh, yeah. And this is not by conjecture. I did a lot of research before I'd ever say this. But these chemtrails are nasty. And there's three reasons for chemtrails. The first is 
they and I talked to my NSA buddies at Fort Carson, Peterson Air Force Base in Buckley, where I was actually their doctor taking care of the pilots flying and spraying the chemtrails. So I know it's real. If anybody says it's not real, they're full of it. Okay, because I'm a whistleblower on the inside, it's not open for discussion. And my NSA buddies told me, 95% of them told me, they were up there trying to spray to reflect the sun out to stop global warming. So most of them are dumb enough to believe that garbage. There you go. There's another source, Dr. Bill Deagle. It was Bill, right? Dr. Deagle. I'm pretty sure it's Bill. Yep, Bill Deagle. Very interesting, folks. So there you go. We're going to take a break. On the other side of this break, we're going to get into the one small town that it, Ontario, Canada city is going to do. Jet, a jet pack, and we're going to take a look at those moon photos. Stick with us. Talk is cheap. Questioning your reality, questioning everything. You're listening to Talk is Cheap with Dan Hofeld. Enjoying the show? Consider supporting us by donating to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash K2D4 Network. Want to listen to the show on the road? Subscribe to our audio podcast. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and many more platforms. Don't miss a single moment of Talk is Cheap. Like what you hear? Consider supporting the channel by going over to our merch store and making a purchase. Go to k2d4network.com for more. This is Shane Robinson with Unbiased and On the Fence, and you're listening to Talk is Cheap with Dan Hofeld. You're listening to Talk is Cheap with Dan Hofeld on the K2D4 Network. Live from the K2D4Network.com studios, it's Dan Hofeld. Welcome back to the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. It is January 8th, 2019. 2019, a new year. Going to stick to those resolutions. Uh, probably best to get rid of them right away before you st- <laughs> worry about them too much. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to jump back into the news here. So we got... This one actually came from one of our my viewers here that wanted to say hey because we talked about what's going on with one small town the michael tellinger contributionism initiative we were supposed to have these towns that were going to do this but we never heard anything and that has been a couple years now well now there's this town in canada north frontenac if i'm saying that right is going to actually start doing this so he said uh the article goes on to say here that members will provide three hours a week strictly voluntary in return for benefits like free electricity. Um, this was before he actually started the, the doing it. So they're going to start out slow. The first thing they're going to do here is like a, the beekeeping. So this could include the obvious honey production as well as wax for candle making, queen hus- husbandry, and starter hives. We would, identif- <clears throat> we would identify how much honey our community needs for those who contribute their three hours a week, the implementa- imp- ah, implementation plan said. Once we know how much honey our community needs for those who contribute their three hours a week, we triple that amount. So they're going to have, you know, this is just strictly volunteer. So those who want to participate, like Michael Tellinger said, those who participate in the project will get to keep the honey. And once they have other projects going, they can keep have their hand in those as well. But they sell the other two thirds out at a slightly higher price than it costs to produce, but substantially lower than the market price. Now this gets people to buy their products more because now they don't have to pay for labor because that's all free labor. Interesting to see that happen. They also say they're going to do forest products manufacturing, you know, canoe making, furniture and wood pellet manufacturing, and agricultural and aquatic food production, water systems to generate electricity. This is going to be done by Langenberg from Eugene, Oregon, and they would install a 
approximately 20 million worth of equipment and recover their investment by selling the power into the grid. So when you do these projects, you got to start out, like you got to get the basic needs taken care of, get people to get their food and electricity and shelter, things like that. If you can do that right away, you can start being self-sustaining. Now that was from 2017, that article. So now I wanted to get more of an updated article. It's there really isn't much talk about this. I went to the the Frontenac, you know, website. There wasn't much there. This is Frontenac News. And the latest update I've seen is that there was 18 investors that were interested, and then there was a whole debacle that he wanted to rent out the community hall for free, and then they didn't want to do that. And But if the investors pay to rent the hall, then they can go ahead and do that. But again... We're here in 2019. He says it's going to take like, he figures if they got going on it, they could be self-sustaining in 10 years, which would be great. I think everybody would want to live in a self-sustaining community, get off that grid and uh, lose control from the puppet masters, if you will. So just a quick update. I thank the viewer for bringing that to my attention because uh, I would have no idea about that. So it's great to hear. Um, if you guys have any tips about stuff that you don't want to put in the... um description uh the comment section below just go ahead and send me an email k2d4network at gmail.com and i can respond to those and get news tips if you have news tips for stories i should be looking at for this show as well don't be afraid to shoot me an email all right let's move on i want to do some fun news before we hit the the moon stuff here All right, the jetpack. Jetpack racing is here. Now, I was as a little boy, I always wanted to have a jetpack. You've seen that Rocket Man video. So, starting next year, jetpack racing will no longer be the stuff of science fiction. Jetpack Aviation, the company behind the first commercially available jetpack. This is very interesting how this is going to work. I'm going to play a little video here for those watching on the video later or live if you are here live. I appreciate you being live. But as you can see, they are cruising across some water, and I'm, do I'm wondering if they're doing that for safety reasons. So if the jetpack gives out that they'll fall in that water. Because I'm really wondering how the safety thing is going to be for this, because they do talk in this article about bringing this to the public. But if you have one of those engines give out, you know, aren't, aren't you going to like drop to the ground? I mean, I could see that being a big liability. But this looks like it would be fun, you know? So I guess these things can go a max of 10,000 feet. They can travel 68 miles per hour, and you only get 10 minutes of flight time. So nothing, nothing very dramatic at all as far as time. It's kind of like with the drones. They don't last that long, but you can have fun in the moment, I guess. that'd be a. I tell you what, that would be a quick, quick 10 minutes. So we did many runs up and down the lake with pilots slowly getting closer and closer to each other on each run and found that they could fly within inches of each other when on the same level. And then again, they're going to start the racing. This is would be this year, I guess, 2019. This, this uh, came out last year, this article, right before the new year. Jetpacks that are being used in the racing will be able to fly at speeds of more than 200 miles per hour. Holy cow. And they're cruising. This is like a child dream come true. Spectators may want to bring some earplugs if they plan to watch from the sidelines as they noted that pilots whizzing by will sound like a group of fighter jets going past. So <laughs> pretty loud. Um, I can't imagine what it's like being on there. I suppose they got... A lot of ear protection. They get, they're got wearing helmets here, too. The jetpack called JB-10 uses twin turbo jets, which have been specifically adapted, reducing the size compared to turbo fans, which run cooler and consume less fuel. Jetpack aviation that is aiming to sell the jetpacks to the public. So that's going to be really, really interesting. And they, they're talking about making an electric version and then that would sell for around $250,000. So <laughs> pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheap sport there if you want to get into it. Uh -huh. 
but oh man it's cool to think about i just wanted to bring that up because i was like having fun articles like that to talk about all right let's move on to some moon moon news jamie please all right chinese spacecraft becomes the first ever to touch down on the dark side of the moon as it transmits never before seen close range images after making historic landing. So I covered this on a show last week, the Chinese spacecraft Chang-4 were supposed to be the first ones out of everybody on the planet uh -huh. to land on the dark side of the moon. And uh, I, I believed it just as much as anything. They sent this up there to carry out mineral and radiation tests presenting scientists with the first ever chance to examine minerals from the far side of the moon. The far side of the moon, uh, known as the dark side of the moon, actually gets as much light as the near side, but always faces away from the Earth. This is because the moon is tidally locked to the Earth, rotating at the same orbit as our other planets. So the far, yeah. So they say it's tidally locked. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if I believe that either. But anyway, folks, here's the images uh, supposedly, but uh, I want to know where the the moon bases are. Look at this photo, folks. I had to bring this up. This is like look closely. You got these two solar. Actually, these might be the track drops. It almost look like they're so like cruddy quality, and this. The moon itself looks a little bit better than those, and that's actually closer. So why is that better quality than the actual moon surface? Um, look up here at the landscape. I'm going to make the mouse bigger so you can see where I'm pointing for those who are looking on the video here. There's a slight green if you really look at it. <laughs> so where did that? was this against a back green screen drop? Did they come through with a brush? and cut this side off. You know, you can make the argument, why aren't we seeing stars? But if they're exposing for the, the light on their their lander, you might not see those stars, of course. So again, nothing mind blowing, folks. This is one of the first ever close-up images taken of the dark side of the moon, which never faces towards Earth. This region is vastly unexplored and unknown to scientists compared to the side of the moon we can see and have visited with the Apollo and subsequent NASA missions. Yeah, right. There's bases back there. You guys got everything back there. This is the first steps to get the public acclimated to, all right, we're on the dark side. We're going to build a base over there first because we found these minerals because that's what they're going up there looking for minerals. Oh, the minerals are better on the back side of the moon. So we built the base over there. And then when we start getting the public going up there, boom, easy transition. Now here on screen is a little diagram of the landings where China is and the U.S. It's, uh, yeah. And then I wanted to read this last thing here. The crater, they're going to, so they're going to explore this crater. The crater is believed to be composed of various chemical compounds, including thorium, iron oxide, and I can't read the last one. But that's, yep, that's where they're pushing the narrative of we're landing over there to look at stuff that's valuable for mining or whatever they need and they can build a base and be self-sustaining and then another thing they push well there's a picture of the the lander again looks like a tinker toy got the uh, gold foil out of the cupboard and then they put some little things on there some little antenna rays uh some nice little uh what are those coasters coasters for your cups for the bottoms down here very very nice they went all out on this one uh-huh but that's what they do. And again, the wheels, no tread, just some nice little, uh, I'm sure that'll get around real fine. This article here, so here's the the uh, the rover coming off. So now we got the, the tracks that are down to get it off the lander, making some tracks going down. Oh, look at that. That almost looks like that's photoshopped in because of the way it turned. It made a hard turn there at the end. Unless it's driving sideways. I don't know about that. Well, we'll see. 
and yeah, right here. So they took with it tin holding silkworm eggs, as well as seeds of a variety of plant species, including potatoes. They want to see how these grow up there again so they can say, oh, we can sustain life up there. Look at folks. I'll be interested to see how the potato thing works, but, uh, you know, even if you had to build a dome or whatever to grow that stuff, I mean, that's not out of reach at all. Not at all. And I was looking at the old clips the other day about the, you know, reminiscent about Ron Paul. He had his good campaign. This was from 2012. I'm going to show this clip here. This, the public was not ready for a man like this to be in the White House. I mean, he wasn't as hardcore as Trump, like, calling people out, but he would have been more of the presidential people. That's why the news, they ignored him. When he would be in, I believe it was second, in the, the exit polls and stuff, they would say who got first, skip him in second, and then just go to the third place person. This is just tactics. But Ron Paul here, I got a clip of him talking about how space... This is back in 2012, how space should be privatized. I thought it was very key to bring this up for people to hear. But I also don't like the idea of building government business partnerships. If we had a healthy economy and had more Bill Gateses and more Warren Buffetts, uh, the, money, the money would be there. It should be privatized. And the people who work in the industry, if you had that, there would be jobs in aerospace. And I, I just think that uh, uh, we don't need a bigger and newer program when you think of the people. I mean... Health care or something else deserves a lot more priority than going to the moon. Uh, so I, I would be very reluctant. But space technology uh, should be followed up to some degree for national defense purposes, but not just for for the fun of it. And you know, for improve, you know, for scientific. He called it back then, folks. 2012. Have they have the private industry do it? It's exactly what's happening. You got NASA coming out saying. We're going to use private industry to take our stuff to the moon. Well, there we go. He called it then. So I just thought it was cool to bring that clip up. It just struck me as, wow, he, he actually knew what was going on. A president we should have had. All right, let's move on to our last story, and we'll uh, close on out of here, folks, on this January 8th, 2019 edition. Wild women. All right. Alien life proof. Best documented UFO crash in history revealed. Now, this is the 1986 Russian crash. This is, how do you say that, Dongolsk incident? I'm going to play a short clip here of it. It's uh, the best documented crash uh, because we do have the fragments. Uh, they have been analyzed it was a small probe, it was not kind of a big object, but something crashed on a hill in Dalnegorsk in, in January of 1986. From analysis of the crash site, this computer simulation illustrates the last moments of the doomed spacecraft. So it came down, cut in half, flew through the trees. If we play the tape in slow motion, we can observe why the saucer-shaped design is so prevalent in UFO reports. I'm going to skip ahead for, because uh, I don't get flagged dead. on copyrights here, because I know I will. But this is what's interesting about this video here. They got this video evidence of them standing. So now, could this be a hoax? Sure. Because you could easily get some actors together like that and make them say, okay, stand there, do, uh, do that, and uh, look good for the camera ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but uh, when you look at this craft, and I'll, I'll bring this up big for you guys, it looks kind of man-made. It looks kind of like welded stuff. I mean, when you typically hear of flying saucers, they got the nice, you know, silver polished look. Not this. This looks like some emerald, like stone, like cast iron-ish kind of thing here. Now they say that this is three meters tall, you know, so nothing big. And then when you get to on the, when it shows the side of it here, I'm going to continue the clip. From contacts with the Russian mafia, 
the producers obtained this exclusive secret KGB footage. The film purportedly shows military personnel and KGB agents at the crash site of a saucer-shaped object. But you can tell on the Leading side Leading the here, mission is the man wearing the fur hat. He is believed to be a senior KGB agent. It's still not certain if the Dalnogorsk incident was the crash of a UFO. That no one could be standing in there. Oh, I gotta stop this. So, I'm just gonna pause it back there real quick so we can have it on screen while we talk about it, but it's probably not gonna work. So, these so auto plays, I tell you, they get you every time. So you got the the. No, stop. So you can tell when it went to the side there that you can't. All right, auto plays. So when it, when it gets to the side there, you can tell that it's not really big enough for anybody to be sitting in there. Now, they could say that that's an alien probe that came down, and you could also say, you know, was it one of ours? I'm kind of starting, the, now that I really look at it, lean more towards that it's something from Earth, and they uh, did that. Again, that was on 1986, January 29th at 7.55 p.m., just interesting, I thought I'd bring it up. Now, the, the reason that they got obtained that footage was because, you know, the Soviet Union was transferring from that to the Russian, and then at that transition, no one really had control over the documents, so they got it leaked out that way. So, quick update. Stephen Greer, I wanted to bring this up before we close out the show as well. Stephen Greer was on Jesse Ventura's show talking about a UFO being caught in the ocean with a fish net. Very, very interesting. Let's listen in. Well, <laughs> we have a new uh, uh, top secret witness who was on a, a, a Coast Guard cutter that was called in very quickly to a site where a Taiwan fishing ve vessel had caught in its net a, a 20 to 30 foot diameter disc, uh -huh. um, and uh, they were retrieving it. And it, uh, they successfully got this out of the water. It was extremely heavy, uh, so heavy that the uh, buoy ship that this gentleman was on was tilted at 45 degrees trying to hoist it on board. And uh, this became very top secret. It was an extraterrestrial vehicle. And so there you go, folks. Thought it was interesting to share that. You know, these, these things become so prevalent. prevalent. Can I even talk today? That... Uh, they start getting these in fish nets, just because there's so many of them. Imagine if they start scooping up these uh, antenna arrays on the bottom there before, <laughs> before uh, too long. So I'm going to go ahead and close the show out. I thank you guys for joining me. And I want to say a special thanks to those who support the show on Patreon. The whole network on Patreon, it's all a group effort. That helps out a lot. Uh, links are in the description below if you want to participate in that as well. Next week, I'll be here Tuesday again, 1 o'clock Central. I'm going to have Kerry Doubting on the show. He's going to help break me, break down some stories with me, ride shotgun, have some fun. So I'm looking forward to that, and we'll see you guys later. Talk is cheap. Dan out.